Eastman's request into consideration. He's given them one week to put it into writing. Then he'll make his ruling on the entire case. At Suffolk Superior Court, I'm Christina Kleinman, the News at 10. The policeman's attorney is considering filing a lawsuit against the state for violating the civil rights of the 11 officers. A Mattapan woman is still deciding what action, if any, to take against the Boston Police Department. Boston police smashed down both the front and back doors to the home of Barbara Brewster. Officers even held her at gunpoint for a time. They were acting on a tip from a 12-year-old boy. After a while, the officers realized they had made a mistake, apologized to Brewster. The department has offered to pay for damages to the home, and tonight Brewster is seeking legal counsel to help her determine what one that the White House had until today been telling the nation was what it was waiting for. But this afternoon, White House spokesman Marlon Fitzwater did an about-face on the speech, saying the president's political opponents had hyped the address so high that America's expectations will never be met. Just what are your expectations? Just to wake up to the problems, uh, stop worrying about his own political uh, fortunes and work for the people, I think, is the big thing. He should uh, go be president of some other country. He's more concerned with them than us. Child care. I'm a mother, and that's a big concern. I mean, there are a lot of things. I think with all the um, poverty and homeless people in the United States that um, foreign aid and all the money they're sending overseas is a joke. I think that they should concentrate on the United States. Mr. Bush delivers his State of the Union address and economic recovery program tomorrow night at 9 p.m. The News at 10 will have complete coverage of the speech plus reaction to it from business and political leaders. Here in Massachusetts, state workers will let the courts decide if Governor William Weld is breaking the state's collective bargaining laws. Two unions representing 27,000 state employees filed suit against the governor. The suit alleges Governor Weld's refusal to honor contracts negotiated under Governor Dukakis is illegal. The governor has no respect for state workers. In fact, he seems intent on carrying out a vendetta against his own workforce. And he leaves us no choice but to fight back. The state workers these unions represent haven't had raises in nearly five years. In news affecting people with children in public schools, the dropout rate for high school students is down tonight. But education budget cuts could mean the rate could be on the rise again. Darlene McCarthy visited one school where the principal is worried about just that. Tonight's weather is brought to you by your New England Chrysler Plymouth dealers. I'm really afraid to say I'm starting to get used to this cold weather. You know, yeah. after a while, you get used to Some it. Some people it like it. You. <laughs> well, I'm glad you two uh, like it, but you know, I'm going to... More to come, huh? Maybe upset because it's going to warm up. Oh, well, this is great news. Boy, no, we're, we're not just, complaining. We're just making everyone's night around here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got a nice warm-up coming. Uh, it should be up near 40 on Wednesday and Thursday. The Terrific. theme this winter, I'll tell you, the uh, cold winds gust, but the snow shovels continue to rust. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, quote me on that one. We're uh, not sorry about that. Uh, I'm yeah, not. It's going to stick around here, not literally sticking too much. Just a few flakes here and there. And we'll go from one flake to, well, not another, but it feels like snow out there. At the present time, temperature of 28 degrees, our dew point 18. Winds south-southeast are generally light at 7 miles per hour, and the barometer 30.45. It's holding steady. We've had a few flurries around the area. Just got a call about five minutes ago from Dave Toll in Manchester. A few snow showers there, a couple lonely flakes, but no big deal. The meaningful moisture on our national satellite pick is down in here, and you can see a lot of juice. This contains rainfall. These clouds running on through the South Atlantic through the Gulf Coast states, but that'll take the old jet stream and Atlantic Avenue, push it out to sea. Does not look like it's going to be coming up the coast and bumping into the cold air. Instead, we just watch this little area of moisture here. Another one of these Alberta Clipper-type systems for the umpty-ump time. Very little moisture coming on through tonight into tomorrow morning. A couple of flurries hither and thither, but not everywhere. A lot of moisture in the northwest. Strong winds on the Oregon coast gusting to about 80 miles per hour. Let's talk about the snow cover. Over the weekend, we just missed a Alberta Clipper around here with a snowfall down in Washington, D.C. of 4 inches. Now, it's rather scanty for the last week of January in spots you'd expect a lot of snow, not having it. New England, not much, but don't let that deter you from the ski areas, making snowfall by the bushel basket up there. And of course, with technology, it's a whole different ball game in northern New England, despite Mother Nature not cooperating. More snow up through the northern plains as well. Again, you can see it up in here, but uh, really not a heck of a lot further south. Of course, it extends on up into Canada. Around here, for the month of January, this is just January, we've had about well, four-tenths of an inch of snow so far. We would normally have a foot of snow for the month, the least ever three-tenths of an inch of snowfall. So what does that mean? 
Well, if we don't get much in the next few days, and February starts this weekend, it could be one of the least snowiest Januarys ever on record in Boston. And there isn't a lot coming up in the next few days, just a couple of flurries. In fact, we're 20 inches below normal for the season in Boston. Remember, you can make that up in one storm. It happens from time to time. We'll just tuck that back in memory. 21 Concord, off to the north and east. We're seeing teens up there in Caribou. Five below zero a short time ago. Worcester, 23. 30 out at Hyannis. A few snow showers east of the Cape, about 15 miles east of Chatham. They may back in with a light northeast drift by tomorrow morning. We'll call it generally crisp compared to the recent very cold weather. And there's not much wind out there either. So some good news on that account as well. Well, around here, the headline for tomorrow will be seasonable and reasonable. In fact, if you average the next few days, 32, 40, 40, divide by three, well, you come up with 37, and that's just about normal for this time of year. That's where we should be. And those 40-degree temperatures should feel pretty nice without too much wind coming up. The northern flow has got the minor moisture with those clippers coming on through here, and that means we see those weak systems and no big storms as all the heavy juice down here is pushed out to sea safely. However, by late in the week, the northern stream here may dig down and carve out a path like this, which could be conducive to a storm offshore. Now, whether or not it stays safely offshore remains to be seen. We'll just have to watch that over the coming days. That's the next threat of any significant storm here in the northeast, not till late in the week or about the weekend. I'm sticking my neck out too far, so we won't talk too much about that. I can tell you tomorrow, not a heck of a lot of colder air. Look at this, better, not bitter. We've got 60s, 70s to near 80 down in Florida even 40s down through portions of the lower Ohio Valley. Uh, still some cold air right here, but again, the coldest air is shifting northeast and no sub-zero air across the entire country, I can say with a smile. We need it on these heating bills. It's been a tough month the past couple weeks. Here's my forecast for Boston and vicinity. Overnight tonight, calling for the clouds out there. Risk of a flurry or two, nothing more than that. Lows will be in the low to mid-20s by tomorrow morning. Winds becoming northeast, not till tomorrow morning. Now, for tomorrow morning, there could be a couple of those flurries around with a light northeast drift to the air. And the winds will stay light northeast all day, but more and more sunshine in the afternoon. Highs up near freezing. Tomorrow night, we'll clear it out with starlit skies, seasonal, low to mid-20s. And the outlook as we head on into Wednesday, a delightful day. Lots of sunshine out there, light winds, and comfortable up near 40. Even if you like the cold weather, Karen and Susan, up near 40. <laughs> no. Again on Thursday, and uh, you can see we may turn a little more cloudy and unsettled before the weekend gets here. We'll worry about that tomorrow. Didn't say I liked it, getting used to it. Big difference. It. Thank know. you, Ron. 40 <laughs> sounds good. Get other news tonight. A Nigerian woman who was stopped, frisked, and subjected to a body search at Logan Airport has won a court battle and a damage award of more than $200,000. The woman says she was detained in 1986 simply because she fit a profile put together by the U.S. Customs Service, a profile designed to help agents identify possible drug smugglers as they step off the plane. A federal judge in Boston ruled today that the woman was wrongfully detained, then coerced with threats and intimidation. NASA is getting the most for its money from the Discovery mission. Ground Control has ordered the shuttle crew to stay up in space an extra day. The astronauts will use the time to conduct a few more experiments on motion sickness and crystal growth. While they work, they'll be dimming the lights occasionally to conserve energy until it's time to come home on Thursday. Hmm, how romantic. I was thinking about that David Bowie song. Which <laughs> yeah, was, and he was singing, too. Did you hear him? You yes, think they I do did. that in, in the, uh, at oh, NASA? Boy. They sing that to the... No, nah, probably not. <laughs> hey, no more stupid Super Bowl No, facts. but we do have one more stupid Super Bowl story okay. <laughs> before the season's over, okay? Monday night hockey. An exciting night, playoff-style hockey. No Neely, but we got Moog back, so that's the story. Stay with us. Work on the sideboard. He'll shoot one. He's deflected Leach in front of the net. Scores! A psychotic killer. A terrifying weapon. A streetwise cop. I'm only interested in killings where they were used a hammer or some kind of a spike. Whose job has become his obsession. But if I'm right, Captain, there's a psycho running around the town. Frank Sinatra, face to face. The act of dying is the ultimate act of surrendering. With a living nightmare. Frank Sinatra. The first deadly sin. Tuesday at 8 on 56. 
No. Sometimes when I remember a song that I used to sing with my mother in Mexico, I pick up the phone and I no. say, Mom, I just heard Caminemos. No. No. It's like we're together again. Clear digital connections. More than any other company. That's why Roberto Ortega depends on AT&T International Long Distance. It makes me feel like I never left. Our dentist recommended baking soda. But we wanted tartar control. Arm & Hammer Dental Care gives us both. Now Arm & Hammer Dental Care just introduced the only tartar control toothpaste with baking soda. And brushing with baking soda... Or baking soda toothpaste... ...is recommended by two out of three dentists to help provide healthy teeth and gums. Only Arm & Hammer Dental Care gives us the tartar control we want... ...and the baking soda our dentist recommends. New Arm & Hammer Dental Care Tartar Control. From the baking soda experts. When a Volvo is in an accident in western Sweden, after the police get called, so does this man. He's Hans Noring, head of Volvo's accident investigation team. People whose findings over the last 20 years helped Volvo develop the collapsible steering wheel, front and rear energy absorbing impact zones, and today, a side impact protection system years ahead of government requirements. Volvo will continue to analyze accidents as long as we can find ways to help people survive them. In many ways, it looks and feels like nothing we have ever built. In many ways, it looks and feels like everything we've ever built. You want me to call you? You don't want me to call you Sue. No. Susan's got to be. All right, Susan. You're upstairs. Let's just in, get just in case, I don't want to make a mistake. Sports. Let's get right Boy. to it. The Bruins the are in action tonight. She's yeah. Susan. Got they it. Were. Got we it. We got it. They were. <laughs> Rosie. That's who we're talking about tonight. Rosie. Not the woman that did those commercials. <laughs> we're talking about Rosie Ruzichka. The Bruins are back on track going into the All-Star game, but they got sidetracked again by injury. Their number one most indispensable player, Cam Neely, out again with a sore knee. But Andy Moog was back in the lineup. And last year, Cinderella's the Minnesota North Stars were in town. But Rosie had the last word. Rosie Ruzichka scored less than three minutes remaining. And the Bruins win it tonight by a score of three to two. Let's check out the highlights. Back from the woods of Maine. That's Lyndon Byers once, then twice to Mike Craig in the first period. This one's caught a break. Late in the first, a high stick by Brian Propp on Glenn Wesley. A five-minute major. Bruins go on the power play. And in the second, they finally break through on a break. Jimmy Johnson off his skate. Steve Leach got credit for number 21 and it was one to nothing later on ray bork would set up ken hodge watch this this is a pretty little pass and hodge catches it in full stride and it's katie by the door baby it's two to nothing the bruins with the lead so here comes minnesota two in the third period two within two minutes as a matter of fact great pass by oak Deline to mike craig who's wide open in on andy mogan Yes, sir. She came in through the bathroom window. It's 2-2. Two, two, but Stop. three minutes to left. Leach. Leach over the line for Rosicka. Rosicka. Shot. Scores! Rosicka from Leach. And the Bruins lead 3-2 three with 3.06 left. What Count it. 3.06 remaining. Andy Moog has won six in a row. He makes a great save in the final minute. Look at this. Are you kidding me? On top of him. He stops it. Moog and the Bruins win 3-2. Celtics went through a 90-minute workout in preparation for their three-game road trip, which begins tomorrow in Washington. Larry Bird is still sidelined, but able to soft toss a few shots around. Kevin McHale is still out. Robert Parrish even sat out today. He deserves a day off. The All-Star game less than two weeks away, and with Bird doubtful, lobbying is on the rise for Reggie Lewis to take his place in Orlando. Well, I am excited, you know, of course I would like to make it, but, you know, it's, uh, I'm not going to be, be on my hands and knees just waiting to hear a call or hear somebody come up to me and tell me that I made it or I didn't make it. Reggie's had an outstanding year at both ends of the floor. If you look at any other two guard other than Michael in the East, uh, I don't know anyone who has played better in, than uh, Reggie. And Robert, uh, I've yet to see a center who has uh, completely come out here and dominated him in the NBA yet. We find out tomorrow. But now let's go to Gamble Arena Stores, Connecticut, where an irate Italian was going crazy on the sidelines. It's Raleigh Massimino. What, no par veal parmesan or something in stores? I don't know. Villanova had a good first half from Lance Miller. Great drive through three defenders. He lays it up and in. He is cooking. 
But in the second half, watch the miss by Scott Burrell and the follow by Torino Walker. Forget about it. Sole possession of first in the Big East. UConn wins 72 to 58. They're ranked sixth. They're 15 and one. Their only loss had been to Villanova. Duke, 93 to 61 over Clemson, and there's still time left. Mike Tyson beginning a huge fight at Indianapolis for his own professional career. Jury selection began for Tyson's rape trial. Five of the 16 necessary chosen today. The trial expected to last three weeks. Tyson defended by Vincent Fuller, famous for defensing, defending John Hinckley, who shot President Reagan. All right, three charges. If he's convicted, he could do 63 years. Champ looks a little pudgy, a little out of shape. Truthfully, how long did yesterday's monstrous mismatch keep your attention? Halftime, maybe? Midway in the third quarter? Once again, the Super Bowl proves to be the most overrated sporting event of the year. And one other point. What excuse did the officials have? Their performance was sub, sub, substandard. What, are they intimidated by the big eye in the sky? Instant replay? I think so. Mark Rippon stands at the pinnacle of pro football today. The truth is, his MVP could have been divided three ways with super receivers Art Monk and Gary Clark, the best in the business. But for now, he's singing, they can't take this away from me. Uh, yeah, I can take that anywhere now. You can't say that he didn't win the big game. If there's any bigger game than this, come up and tell me about one, and uh, you know, I'd like to get a chance to play in that. While Rippon put his glorious stamp on history, Buffalo now joins Denver as a city tagged as bridesmaid. Their bills didn't take defeat well Sunday night. I said before the game that we need to go out and make history. We did it the wrong damn way. Today, the bruises were soothed by rabid Bills fans who braved bitter cold to pay tribute to their fallen team. And right now, we have the world champion fans. 